we have seen basically how we create a complex electronic system like smartphone using system on chip. Here I would like to show you how we build such SOCs using processors like RISC-V processor. In this case, it's a simple embedded systems microcontroller. So we use a RISC-V RV32i microcontroller. This processor IP is connected with other hardware IPs and interface IPs through on-chip bus. In this case, it's AXI bus. And we also need some bridges to connect the IPs which are based on other protocols. That could be a low performance device like timer or keypad based on simple interface like APB. So we need a bridge like AXI to APB to connect the processor which is based on AXI to the components like timer which are based on APB. If there are any other components which are based on AHB protocol, in this case there is an IP memory controller which is based on AHB. So to connect this memory controller with the processor, we need AXI to AHB bridge. And then we also connect the components like uh, RAM and storage memories like flash. This is how basically we connect all the IPs through on-chip bus with processor and this is how we realize any system on chip. All right. Let me show you the transformation steps, how we convert the software applications into machine language program. Whatever the applications we create using high level languages like C or C++, it will be compiled into assembly language program and then the assembler is going to convert the assembly language into machine language. Everything is going to be in binary and the processor is going to execute only machine language program. Look at this example. This is how we define expression in high level language could be system Verilog or C or C++, there is an expression and the compiler, RISC-V compiler converts this expression into assembly language. So these are all RISC-V instructions, add I, shift left logical and I. This is how the assembly program would look like and then the assembler is going to convert this assembly language into machine language. To convert this into machine language, it follows a RISC-V ISA. RISC-V ISA defines the format of the instruction. There could be different formats like R, I, S, B, U, J. So here if you look at add I falls under I type instruction, immediate type. SLL shift left logical falls under R type instruction. Again, and I falls under I type. So based on the format, it's going to convert the instruction into binary. For example, look at here I type. Uh, there are 12 bits for immediate values. So this two will be stored as 12 bits in the memory. That's what ISA defines. And then there are other fields like destination register and source register and for each register it takes 5 bits because there are overall 32 registers so we need 5 bits to address each register. So finally it would look like this as I mentioned here look at this this 2 will be like 12 bits so all zeros and one zero which is nothing but 2. Right, and that is op code and then remaining things could be like function so here 0 0 0 indicates its add function and it also indicates the source register and destination register so this is 12 this is 28 so this is x12 this is x28 and this is the function which is nothing but add and this is immediate value 12 bits so overall if you consider 32 bits this is defined by RISC-V ISA 
and this is how the instructions will be converted into binary. So finally, the binaries will be loaded into RAM and then the processor is going to fetch the instructions one by one. So everything is going to be executed in terms of binary. All right. How we compile a C code? Look at this compilation process. Source code, sum.c and RISC V compiler converts this into assembly code .s file and assembler converts this into object codes. So it's going to be sum.o and there could be other object files for IO operation and other libraries. And then linker is going to link all these object files and it's going to produce executable file. Uh, if it is going to be on Windows, it's going to produce sum.exe. exe is the executable file. And then when you execute this file, the loader is going to load the equivalent binary in the memory. And then the processor is going to execute the instructions one by one. risc v ISA, it's an abstract interface between low-level software and hardware. So when I say low-level software, that's nothing but compiler and assembler. When I say low-level hardware, that's nothing but the processor. Sure. So basically, RISC-V IAC is a golden reference for both embedded systems engineer and VLSA engineer. Embedded systems engineer is going to refer RISC-V IAC and based on the specification, he is going to design the compiler. So basically the compiler should support all the instructions and it should be able to convert any kind of high level uh, language into assembly language, risk v assembly language. And VLSA engineer is also going to look at risk v ISA as a golden reference and he will implement the RTL design. risk v processor. How it works? It works through five stages, fetch, decode, execute, memory, and write back. Let me explain how it does everything through five stages. The instruction will be loaded in instruction memory. So the processor is going to read the instructions sequentially, mostly sequentially, sometimes it could happen in non-sequential manner. The processor has got a special register called program counter. Program counter will always increment by 4. So PC equal to PC plus 4. This is how it's going to increment. Because in risk 5 we do byte addressing. So it's going to increment like 0, 4, 8, 12. So PC will always increment by 4. That's how the processor is going to fetch the instruction from memory. And then the decoder will decode the instruction. What type it is, there could be different types and what the instruction has to do, the operation. So once it decodes the instruction, then it communicates to the arithmetic logic unit what kind of operation it has to perform. So. As part of execution, the arithmetic logic unit is going to perform operations like arithmetic operations or it could be uh, logic operations or it could be shift operation. So there could be different kinds of operations and based on the functionality, it's going to produce the output. The results will be stored sometimes in memory and most of the times it will be stored back into register. So the next stage memory it's going to write the values into memory or sometimes it might read the value from the memory. And then most of the times, whatever the results the ALU produces, it will be written back to the register, primarily in destination register. So that's what happens through write back. So the processor does everything through five stages. It fetches the instruction, it decodes what the instruction has to do, and then based on the functionality, the ALU is going to produce the result and the result will be written either in memory or in register file. 
There are two main things. One is data path, the logic that performs arithmetic operation. The other one is control logic, the logic that controls data path, memory and I.O. devices. This is how you can visualize a RISC-V processor. All right.